Hello guys, I'm finishing today the series about Laravel multi-tenancy, about the team multi-tenancy specifically with subdomains. So on registration, users would be able to specify the subdomain and would be redirected to that subdomain and see only their records. So how to do that in this video? As I said, this will be last part of the series that I've published on YouTube. For all the rest of the course, you should go to laraveldaily.teachable.com. You can purchase the course and get the access to the repositories as well. The full course will also contain invitation system, packages, reviews, and multi-database setup with more complex cases. Or if you're planning to learn more topics about Laravel from me, the best deal financially is yearly membership to my courses. You will get the same course of multi-tenancy and all the other courses, currently 31 courses at the moment, and I'm planning to shoot one or two courses per month. So instead of buying each of them individually, you should opt for the yearly membership which is roughly the price of four to five courses. So instead of paying for 30 courses individually, you pay for four or five of them and get all 30. Now let's dive into the subdomain topic. Now let's talk about subdomains. This is a pretty typical way how to structure the multi-tenancy projects and how to distinguish tenant from tenant. So every tenant would feel kind of a personal space. Fake, but personal space. What do I mean by fake? Why it is fake? because actually it's not a security filter that would be enough. What do I mean by that? For example, we have tenancy.test. This is locally on my Laravel valet. And if I wanted to create povilas.tenancy.test, so I would feel like at home, like it would be povilas.slack.com or other projects that use subdomains. Just by subdomain, it's not enough to filter the records by my space, by my tenant. If I take just the URL and then filter the data by that URL, then anyone could fake my URL without even being logged in or being logged into another tenant and just replace their URL and land onto my space, my workspace, which is a security issue. So in this video, I will create subdomains. I will show you how it works, but you need to understand correctly that it is more like cherry on top, like part of your design of your application, but not authentication of tenant. But still, let's implement these features. Register subdomain at the registration and then redirect to correct subdomain and then when switching between the tenants, also redirect to their own subdomain. So in the registration blade, register blade, let's copy and paste the field for name and let's put that at the bottom as subdomain. So everyone would create their own subdomain and we will save that into the database. Subdomain, ID subdomain, like this, value old subdomain, subdomain required, but no autofocus. Great, refresh, and we have the subdomain field. Of course, we need to add class margin top four here. Okay, looks good. Now in the database, let's create the subdomain field column in the tenants database table. PHP Artisan make migration, add subdomain to tenants table like this. Then we have that migration and it's just a string field. Then let's make it fillable as I always do for all the new fields. So name and subdomain are fillable in the model and then in the registration in the controller. Now we will create tenant with the subdomain. Of course, first we need to validate it. We need to validate the unique domain, right? So in addition to request validate rules here, we do subdomain also required and then unique in tenants subdomain field. And then in the tenant, Let's put in here name and subdomain equals request subdomain. And then instead of route service provider home, we need to redirect to full URL, which would be, for example, HTTP and then subdomain name, which is a request subdomain. Then our main domain, which is dot tenancy dot test and then that home dashboard but it's not flexible enough, right? 
So if you upload that code to staging or to live server, that wouldn't work because the domain isn't actually tenancy test on the live server. So we need to take that tenancy test from somewhere and it is in fact .env file. It should be in your .env file app URL. So you can take that and put some string magic to replace like HTTP with domain. For example, let's have a variable of main domain equals config app URL, which in turn takes the env value. Actually, let's double check if it's URL config app. We on top we have name and we have env and we have debug and we have URL. So this one default is localhost. Otherwise, it comes from env file. And here we need to replace. Let's do replace, for example, this part with this part plus request subdomain and then dot at the end. And this will be a parameter here. And now we can replace all of that with main domain. Or in fact, let's rename that variable to tenant domain. So it would be absolutely clear what we're working with here. And let's try it out. We register. Of course, first we need to run the migration, PHP artisan migrate, and then fake filler Chrome extension for subdomain. Of course, we need to add one more validation. So it would be alpha numeric, so required. And then let's make it just alpha letters. From what I remember, this is the validation rule name. And then let's do ABCD. It would be ABCD.tenancy.test. We register and we are redirected correctly to the subdomain, but we are not logged in correctly. And this is important thing. For authentication session, Laravel saves cookies on your computer based on domain and domain and subdomain is a different domain. So to perform that wildcard subdomain thing, we need to go to config session PHP and change the session domain to dot, which is for wildcard, and then session domain should be put in your env file, or maybe configured in the config file, but more flexible to have it here, session domain, tenancy, test. And now if we register again with new user, with another subdomain like XYZ, we are at XYZ tenancy test, and on the dashboard, we are logged in with wildcard cookies for session. And why does it work for me? XYZ tenancy test. This is more of a DevOps question, server management question than coding. So I will not teach you how to configure your wildcard subdomains in the scores, but I will give you a few hints. Locally, I use Laravel Valet as my server and Laravel Valet does that automatically. I didn't configure anything. This is the thing. Valet automatically allows you to access the site, the site that you park, which is tenancy.test, in my case, using wildcard subdomains. So I didn't have to configure anything. For multi-tenancy, for example, in Nginx, this article from servers for hackers, this is an example configuration of wildcard subdomains. And this is the Nginx part, the server part. Then you need to configure your DNS records, so domain and then take care of SSL certificates as well if you use HTTPS, which you should. So this topic is a separate topic which is outside of this course. So you can Google that separately or you can use a tool called Laravel Forge, for example, which I'm a heavy user of, but I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid for mentioning it in this course. I just recommend that Forge allows you to create domain, for example, myproject.com as Laravel project and one of the checkboxes is allow wildcard subdomains, which means that Forge will automatically configure Nginx for you. So it can be a massive help if you are not into DevOps and configuring servers manually. Okay, we're back to our page and this is not all in this video. We have that subdomain, but should we do something about it? Should we check that? Should we get that into a variable and then filter some records for it? As I said in the beginning of this video, that is not what I would advise. Laravel has the routing feature of subdomain routing. So we could do that. Route domain, then do wildcard domain, and this will be our tenancy test or session domain from env file. And then we would have account as a variable inside of all the routes. But we do have the current tenant ID saved in the database. And this is our primary source of security check which are the domain active for the user. So even if I put in some other domain, other subdomain here, ABCD, what would happen? Actually, I don't know. 
we're automatically logged out because we don't have active session for that subdomain in Laravel. And that is great. So that is already a security protection. So in my case, what I would advise is not do wildcard routing with subdomain for multi-tenancy. But if you have a user with multiple tenants, let's simulate that situation with register a new user. And this time I will remember the password here. Subdomain, let it be something like DDD. We register, we are in our subdomain, but in the database, let's change some data. So we have user ID five, and let's add that same ID five to tenant ID four as well. So we have multiple tenants. And if we refresh, we have one of the team active as we did in the previous lesson. And if we switch, let's switch subdomain as well. So we go into our tenant controller, which we've built in the previous lesson. And here, instead of route dashboard, we will just copy and paste the code from the register controller, tenant domain. Let's close the sidebar again. We paste it here. We import route service provider as PHP Storm suggested. And just instead of request subdomain, we'll have tenant subdomain. And let's try it out. Let's click the link. As you can see, XYZ, and then back DDD. And this team becomes bold. So we're switching between subdomains, but as I said multiple times in this video, it's just a nice touch that you visually see what team you are on, logged on, but the filtering of the data actually is performed by users, current tenant ID field from the database.